What's going on? And welcome to update five of Satisfactory. This is episode one of season one of the Let's Play series. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. I'm so excited to get ready for this because not just that, it's a fresh start. And I did not start a fresh start over on, on stream because that's where I mainly do a lot of Satisfactory content as well. So if you want to see me, check the description below. You can come on over, give me a click, give me a follow. Come and say hello to the community. You might fit in well. Isn't that right, Bean? But we have our first job list to do. We need to find a location. And as you can see, we are in the Northern Forest. And what other better starting location than this? It has four pure iron, two pure limestone, and two pure copper. And a whole load more. But first, we need to take out some bad guys. Come on, crabbies. Come, come, come. These are always drunk. They always, like, look at them. They decide to roll around all the time. Okay, so now we've took the care of them things. Let's get our hub down so we can get our operations up. And we can start looking at our milestones. Get rid of these first as well. Because these want our attention all the goddamn time. And, oh, everybody meet Ava. My beautiful machine that carries our milestones from here to God knows where. As you know, we go into here. Oh, God damn, it's collected a bush. Um, and then we have our base building, logistics, field research, our tier two, part assembly, obstacle clearing, jump pads, resource sink bonus. That is going to be very, very useful now. And we need to take a look into that because the whole beginning of the game now has now changed drastically because of the new foundation uh, costs. So uh, we'll get to that later on. But now we've got all this set up, we can actually get our first... Uh, assembly line set up. So we're going to go with uh, iron plates and we're going to get an iron rod set up as well. So we're going to remove this iron, uh, pure iron no or node here. Then we can place a miner, a smelter, a constructor, and then a storage bin. Connect them all up with belts. Select the recipe, which is going to be iron ingots into the smelter. Iron plates into the constructor, because that's the uh, final outcome we want. Connect these up via power lines. Connect this up to our biomass burners on the back of our hub. These two will actually provide 20 megawatts of power. That's equaling 40 in total. But to power these, we need to grab, grab ourselves some leaves. So let's grab some leaves. Go to the crafting bench. Start breaking down the leaves into biomass. Add the biomass to the burners. The miner is now giving us some iron ore. The smelter is now making us some ingots. And now the constructor is making us some iron plates. So let me show you how this whole process works. A lot of you are probably already going to understand this. But for those new players, this is obviously a pure nod. A pure nods is shout. 120 iron ore with a mark one miner if it was on a normal node it would dish out 60 and if it's on an impure node it would dish out 30 so what does this do so the iron node as you can see here is dishing out 120 iron per minute but we have a bit of a problem early game is if we go into our logistics and then go to our mark one conveyor belt you can actually see right here this mark one belt only transports 60 resources per minute so, right now, this belt is bottlenecking this system from expanding. And plus, we need a splitter, of course. Then, that goes into the smelter, which only requires 30. And this is where that splitter I was telling you about will come into play. And we'll talk about later, so I don't confuse you now. So, now this machine needs 30 iron ore, which we are getting because the belt is bringing in 60. Then, that is creating 30 iron ingots per minute, which is then going across this belt, which has room for another 30 ingots because this is only sending out 30 and this belt holds 60 going into a constructor which needs 30 iron ingots so what this smelter is actually sending out this constructor actually needs so i call that a one-to-one -one ratio then these ingots are creating 20 iron plates per minute which is then going across this belt and into a storage for me to grab and build and utilize whatever else i want to do with it so that's pretty cool next I need an iron rod set up. And with the power of editing, boom, I've created one. So, same principle. We've got a miner dishing out. Well, 
technically is 120. Going across a 60 belt, so we've got 60 iron ore going into this smelter, which is needed 30. Sending out 30 iron ingots across this belt, and goddamn, I cannot chop this bush down or remove this bush until I get a tractor, because there is a bug with it right now, and I cannot remove it, unless he had explosives, which we can get later on as well. But then, anyway, behind that bush, there is ingots going into this constructor, which is only needing 15 this time, because a... Smelter dishes out 30 iron ingots per minute, which a iron rod recipe only needs 15. So if you think about it, we can technically put down two constructors right here, but we can't yet because we do need a splitter, which is currently locked in the hub. So if you go up here, you can see tier one under logistics, we can grab the conveyor splitter, the merger, the conveyor lift mark one and productivity display all at a cost of these items. We are automating iron plates we are automating iron rods, but we're not automating wire. So for us to do that, we will need to go to a copper node and sort a automation process out. But I could easily craft this by hand, but that is some advice I always give new players who always ask, hey Bits, how do you always start at the beginning of a let's play? How, how, what advice would you give to a new player? And my advice is don't handcraft anything get it all automated as, as as possible so for me to unlock this i'm going to automate wire so let's go and do that so the first thing find yourself a copper node take out some enemies remove the rock from the center of the node place down your miner your smelter your constructor and then your storage bin connects all them up via your lines also, do not worry about everything looking neat and tidy at the beginning. It's going to happen. It's early game. And I actually need some wire for me to complete this. So this is the only time I will handcraft. But because I played the game before, I know if I run around here, I would actually come across a hard drive location. And there should be some copper wire right here. And a hog. God damn it. Come on then. Come on, there's another one over there. There we go. I'm going to grab one of that because I'll show you what we can do with that later. Now we can pick up some wire here. There's also some screws, some re forest plate, some more wire, and um, that hog that I was telling about. Come here. He's stuck. He's stuck. Oh, run away. Come back. Hog. Stop running away. Let me... Let me kill you. <laughs> So now I can pick up the items around here. Just loads of freebies. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't think we can grab this hard drive yet. No, because we need modular frames. So we'll visit this later on. Now I can continue making my power poles so I can start automating copper wire. So here comes our copper ore going into our smelter, which is making us some copper ingots requiring 30. Come down here. Our copper ingots are going into our constructor, which is making us some wire at 30 per minute right here and then bob's your uncle we've got that all automated so let's go and grab some rods that's come out of the machines and then let's go grab some plates as well and then we're going to head over back to the hub to place some of these items into the computer so we can cross it off because if, if you look in the top left uh, top right now you can actually see that our milestone logistics objective is there and we can just place these in here. And then... Boom! Our first milestone done. Logistics. Given us access to splitters. And there goes Ava. Taking wherever she wants with these items to God knows where. But maybe we'll find out when 1.0 drops. Who are we sending all this stuff to? So now we've unlocked splitters, but I kind of want to start putting everything down on a grid. But first, we are going to need some concrete foundations. And that is actually locked in the hub as well. So we do need to get limestone. So let's head up here. Let's do the same ritual we do with every new node. Kill the mobs. Remove the rock in the middle of the node. Okay, so I've quickly set up the limestone line and we just lost power oh god okay well anyway 
mine it was uh, mine is down on the limestone which is going straight into a constructor because the limestone does not need to be smelted it goes straight into a constructor which requires 45 per minute which we are receiving 60 on this belt for for, for the constructor to give me 15 concrete per minute but i do need to put down a storage bin which i forgot to put down so let me just put that there and connect you to there and like i said it's all going to be untidy at the beginning trust me it happens all the time so let's go and fix this power i think i need to put down another burner i do i've actually blown a fuse so i actually need to put down another generator or a burner biomass burner so if we're going to power with a biomass burner let's just place one of these down let's fill you with biomass connect you up to the grid switch the power back on bam so now with biomass burners and this is this used to happen with coal generators but doesn't do it anymore well to be honest with most fuel generators but uh it, only biomass burners do this now so they only consume what they need so as you can see our production line is always going to match the consumption rate with biomass burners if it's anything else like coal or oil or nuclear power uh, all the good stuff it's they always um consume what they need every minute all right so as we can see we we have a limit of 48 megawatts per minute per minute from all of our machines when they're all powered but our three biomass burners which is this one's giving me 20 per minute well 20 per minute 20 per minute and then this one is giving me 30 per minute giving us a capacity of 70 megawatts which is this gray line up here the blue line is what we're actually uh, consuming so if you ever see this blue line above that gray line you know you could have a power cut soon but then you've got your production line which is this one which is highlighted you can see it going up and down because machines are turning on and off because they're all not efficient blah 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 which we'll sort out later on but now we have do we have limestone going why are you red wait aha there we go render distance but anyway we have concrete being made so if we go back to the hub we can now actually set our new milestone for foundations if we're going to base building blah de, blah de, blah i'm going to select that milestone and let's put whatever we can in here and then as you can see in the top right we need another 192 uh, foundations and another 89 rods which i would think we have enough of the rods no we're still short and we're definitely not going to have enough concrete yet because we've only set it up let's go and get some wire as well and then what we'll do is i'm just going to hang around a little bit get these to build up and then we can actually crack on okay so i've got what i needed so i'm just going to put all my stuff in here and then unlock base building and then ava should actually fly off she is go and deliver your things and then we have just unlocked the good old foundations next is gonna be field research because then we unlock the mam object scanner beacon personal storage another hand slot and some more inventory space but now we need screws which is more of a next stage in our iron production but first we need to sort out this time to clean it all up okay so i went and did that but as you can see now i have now placed a foundation down and this is actually going to be our grid that we're going to use throughout the world so when we go to another biome or build another factory this grid will link up perfectly with the other one so we can easily transport our trains our our, our vehicles going across there and even our belts as well and it just keeps everything organized and for all you including myself in this game who are always ocd clean you know so the first thing we need to do is we need to grab our miner and I don't if if a lot of people know this, but you can actually place a miner down on the foundation. But sometimes it won't allow you. It's like there's an ore underneath here, and it's not allowing me to place it. But there's a neat little trick: is if you was to remove the foundation that is next to the center of the ore, you can actually look at the ore, and it should, bink, snap, just like that. And now we have the other one. Sometimes if it does not work, you just need to lower the foundation down. 
Next up, as you know, we've now unlocked splitters. So we're going to grab our smelters and we need to place two of these down. So we're going to place one there and we're going to place one there. And it is a one to one ratio. So if we put a constructor down as well. And you can see here, iron ingot needs 30 iron ore, sends out 30 ingots. And the constructor for iron plates needs 30 ingots for 20 plates. So that means this smelter also needs a constructor in front. Now we can just place our belts down. Just like this. And then on this side, we're just going to go into our delicious six. And you'll see now we have a new tab, which is sorting. And we've got splitters. So with splitters, you, you can see. And then if I put a merger down as well. You have two different two different ones, right? So the line means this is a input and the arrows means this is an output. So we've got one, two, three. So if we was to send down here a line of 60 iron ore and we was to put a belt out of this one and a belt out of this one, that would mean 30 will go along this one and 30 will go along that one. And that is what we want for this setup because these smelters require 30 iron ore. However, the mergers actually merge lines that are going into it. So as you can see, this is an input, 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 and then this is the output. So if we was to get a 30 iron ore going in, 30 iron ore going in this one, this will output 60 on this line. So that's basically the premise of splitters and mergers. So what we need to do here is we need to place a splitter down just in front of this smelter, and then another one just right here. And then we're going to connect these up just like this. And if you use the rule of number two that I call it, and this, you can make a perfect 90 degree angles. So as you can see, there's the output directly in line with this belt. And you can see that the X axis here is showing that it's straight as well. If you pull it back two spaces, so one, two, you can then place, and then you'll have a 90 degree turn to keep things nice and clean. So let's finish up with this and attach these belts. Then on the opposite side, we're gonna place down a merger. And the merger is going to face in that direction. So we want the output to go. Line it up to that constructor. Line it up to that one. And then we're going to place down a storage bin. So that means now we place the mergers there. These two constructors are going to send their outputs into this merger. This one's going to send it into this merger. And then this line is going to come across here. And then both lines will uh, become one, basically. So that means... The iron plates will be 20 from here, 20 from this one, merge into the here, and then we'll have 40 going into this storage container. It's pretty simple. So once you get used to it, you can you can start doing it like super quick. And then, well, I'm basically doing this for you guys that are, are new. So I apologize for those that are who are pretty experienced at doing this. But it's just, I just want to show you my uh, train of thought so you can understand me better as a satisfactory player. Now... We've done that. We just need to get it all powered up. Which we're just going to place you in the middle. Same with you. Keep it nice and clean. The recipes are all set. Let me just double check. They are indeed. Now we need to power the miner. Which we're just going to keep a nice clean path of power lines. So now the iron ore is going in. And you can see it's being split. So this should now power this one. And this should never go higher than a one to one. Because every time it consumes one, it should receive one because it is 100% efficient line because it's receiving 30 iron ore. And then on this side, you can see the plates coming down and the plates going into this merger, which then they'll both become onto this one line and join up and then go into this storage bin. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to copy this exact setup we have here. We're going to flip it on its head. We're going to put the two merges here, the storage there, the constructors here, and the smelters here. And we're going to bring in the second miner, which is going to make a more iron plates. Because, as you know, in this location, we have four uh, pure iron nodes. And the other two that we have is going to make the iron rods. So, within the blink of the eye, you should see this flipped on its head. And we should well double the production that we have here. And we should be now making 80 plates per minute. Okay, so as you can see, we have now just duplicated our iron plate production. We can see that we've got two smelters on the left, two smelters on the right. Everything is symmetrical, and we're making a total output of 80 plates 
per minute. But now we need to do the rods. And the rods, we're going to grab the two uh, other ores, which is one over there. That is off. The pinging system is off right now in experimental. So if it's where them two pings are, I've got two iron ores there. But we're going to bring them two lines down here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to either place them along this side by adding an uh, additional piece of foundation here, or we might go um, horizontal here. I think that's where I might take it. And then it's the same with the the the, um, uh, the limestone. We might, we might keep it up on that particular level, but we're just going to raise the grid up a little bit and same with the copper over there. But first, let's crack on with the iron rods and get that underway and i will get the miners down and i'll bring them straight over so you guys don't have to just watch me just do all of that all right so let's bring over the iron ore uh so i kind of did a little bit more than just bring a iron ore over <laughs> so as you can see i've now added the two iron rod lines so i'm gonna break this down for you and we'll go through it step by step so you can understand what's going on so we've got two 60 lines going in but we're only going to focus on one because it's obviously it's duplicate of the other. So this is one 60 line going in, being split into two 30 lines. We've got a 30 line going there and a 30 line going there. This then only needs 30, the smelter. And then the, as you know, it is a one to two ratio. So for every 30 ingots, we need 15 ingots in a constructor. So that means one smelter to two constructors. Then that making rods okay is that simple enough is that do you need a better explanation or are we, are we good are we good so four constructors make 60 iron rods right so 15 15 15 15 which is the maximum belt capacity of the mark one belt going into storage bin and then that is just the rod setup and i've just copied what i've done here and duplicated it so then we can future expand this when it comes to the next tiers of belts when we get more two belts all we need to do is just double this and place more simple as that now time for the limestone oh i also forgot to tell you i had to double well triple slash quadri how many did i have before one I, I tripled it now i've got four anyway i've added more biomass burners so well because obviously we needed more demand for the power so if we look at the power grid right now we now have a max consumption rate of 122, which is all of our machines. That's on this one grid. Um, and the production right now is 93. So we're, we're pretty good. And our capacity of our power generators is all 160 megawatts. But I am due, I believe, I need to go and get some more biomass because I'm out. I don't think you've got any in here as well. I don't. This is going to suck. I don't know why, but I've, I've got this which is the hub, and this should get consumed when you place a hub down. I think it's glitched. I, I think it's a bug. Okay, so with the concrete, we didn't actually need to do much because there's nothing we, we can really do. Like, the this is making me 120 per minute. The belts obviously can only hold 60, and this consumes 45. Um, so either I was just to put a constructor here, and because we don't have access to underclocking and overclocking right now, I've just left the one machine. So... Only thing I did was just add foundation, and I I don't have any ladders to get down or anything, so or ramps. But I'll need a ticket machine for that. But next, I'm gonna set up the copper line, which is we're gonna we're gonna keep on the same grid. I'm just gonna take a foundation over, and then build a copper system over there, a copper factory. And there we have it. There is our copper facility all 100 percent efficiency i've just double checked and I, I guarantee when i go around in a second i'm gonna find something wrong it's usually the case right bean oh by the way do you like my like <laughs> ladders i made i've had to stack storage containers just so you guys can have a look down on this because i have no jetpack or hover pack or yeah so let me show you what i've done here so if we jump oh i might damage myself yep okay so what i've done is i've got the two miners uh, being sent down here. So I've got the a 60 line and the 60 line. Um, this basically is the same principle as the iron rods. So it's a one to two ratio. So one smelter, to two constructors. 30 going into the smelter with the uh, copper ore, making 30 copper ingots. Going into two constructors, which is making me wire uh, at 30 per minute. So 30 wires coming out. And as you know, belts can only fit up to 60. So what I've got to do 
is make a belt that comes off from this merger and goes into its own bin here and then them two go into their own bin but on this side it's exactly the same setup except i've added two additional constructors on the end so where the wire is coming out of these two to which merge together wait is it running hello you're not receiving oh my god what did i just say oh <laughs> i knew something was up. well anyway you can see the process happening now so we have the iron going into uh, iron uh, the copper going into here which is sending out ing uh, ingots per minute which is uh 15 ingots per minute this is obviously making 30 then that's making me copper wire which 60 is then going into here which then is making me 30 cables which is merging with this other side so that right there is a duplicate of this making me a total of i think it's 60 yeah 60 cables in total on this line once this line joins up so in a second we should see this as a full line just like this actually we didn't have to wait that long there we go that is our copper facility oh i also added uh two more biomass burners so now we've got six which is what sextuple is that what it is i think why is that wanted my attention we've been here thank you but anyway we do need to get field research up and running but we didn't get the screws did we but anyway that that can wait that can wait we have now completed basic automation and now with all of our basic automation set up we can see everything running we now have copper at 100 percent efficiency we now have our iron rods at 100 percent efficiency and our copper plates at 100 percent efficiency and also the limestone oh yeah i made another tower of like nine storage containers because i don't have ladders unlocked yet but We'll do that in the next episode so guys thank you so much for watching and look at the moth God, this is this like perfect it's like a new i was ending the episode right here but anyway <laughs> thank you so much for watching guys and always if you've enjoyed the video please subscribe obviously it does mean a lot like it helps me fight against the algorithm i will be releasing another tips and tricks video soon and i will be releasing part two of this as well and if there is anything you would like me to show in a video this could be in a guide is, is there a recipe you want to understand a bit more is there any other information you would like me to share within satisfactory please leave it in the comments below and yes again check the description for my twitch i do stream over there every monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday at 10 a.m gmt and as always keep smiling and i'll see you in another video bye bye <laughs>